So Dr. Klein's talking about when these are the two different spots that zero cocking can happen before or after the ball. So this is the ground here. At impact, the hands lead the club head a little bit. So uh, uh, we have uh, this angle here. And then after impact, uh, you will have a zero cocking when the body and, and the club aligns. So when this happens, this is the hand pad here. It, at the impact, the hands are actually moving upward here. So uh, at impact, because the hands are moving upward, that's why your club head will be able to go more flat or slightly upward here. But if the low point occurs before, before the impact, then what happens, the club head is going down quite a bit. And it has a really bad, uh, uh, you know, hit uh, to the ground. So the reason why you have a clean impact here is because the hands are actually moving slightly upward by leading the club. And then these hands are moving up, so your club head will be able to go either horizontal or slightly upward without hitting the ground hard. So that's why the zero cocking has to happen after the impact. Okay. And then because the club head is moving a lot faster than hands, so the club head will catch up and eventually it will uh, go ahead of the hands and you will finish here. So uh, this is really important. And when you have uh, outward swing plane, with a flat back swing and then try to hit the ball. Then the low point occurs quite early. And then it starts moving upward. So either you miss the ball, you have a really bad hook. Okay. So most of the, most of the people who have uh, the, this low point of the club head early on will uh, is because of the severely outward swing plane. So when you adjust the, the swing plane, the low point comes closer to the impact point so that the club head goes down and then from here the club starts moving up because of the hand motion here, then you will have clean impact. And also at impact, when you push the ground with the lead leg well, then it will also help this upward motion of the hands and you will have clean impact. When you don't use the leg that well, just try to use the arms here, it leads to really a bad fast shot because of that. <clears throat> I would say one thing, that's what happens to you in the short game when you get pitch shot. The body stops and the club head goes by you instead of allowing yourself to go through. Yeah, the chest stops. Mm -hmm. yeah. The irons uh, will have a little bit of a down, uh, down below. Right. But essentially it's the same. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. And particularly when you have a longer club, then this angle will be smaller. So more leading happens. When you have a, a shorter club, then uh, this time difference will be a bit narrower because uh, you don't have to really create this with a shorter clip. And how can the steps and the pressure help us hold off? You said a little, a little bit about the left leg, but how can starting your swing the right way and the steps and the pressure hold off the zero cocking from so when, when it comes down to early. the leg action, always the key is the up, up motion, not the down motion. You don't create this in, uh, down, downward motion intention, but rather what you, you, uh, you have to put effort for is uh, the upward motion. So up here and then up motion here. Okay. Of course, this, uh, uh, the hip moves up because you're pushing the ground down. But uh, in your image, you always have an up and the up motion here instead of intention to try to uh, go down. <laughs> instead of this motion, up, up. So you have a subtle uh, dropping of the body, but then you push the ground and then up, up. So when you go up, this action will give you enough distance here. So you'll have a clean impact. You will let the hands and club go through, but because you have good distance here, you will have a clean impact. But if you don't use the leg that well, then what you have to do is this. You have to control this distance by using the arms. You and you're not on to uh, this. From if I let this fall, it falls at a certain speed. If I let it fall and pull up on it, it goes faster, which is what you're saying. But in addition to the speed you get is as I go into here, as I move this up, I get that flat spot that he was talking about. And that's what happens as you're going through the wall. So uh, the hand motion promotes a good uh, impact. Okay. 
But that hand motion has to come from the end of the body with the leg action. And uh, usually what happens is uh, when you have a chicken wing posture, that typically what happens is you let the club go early out. And then if you keep doing this, and you will hit the ground really bad. So you know that you are pulling it in, that you are going to this position. So in order to fix this problem, if you keep saying, uh, oh, you know, straighten your arms, that doesn't work because the cause is up here, right? So you have to change the way you're moving the hands here, then naturally you will have more straightened arms here. So always it's, impo it's important to understand the cause and effect relationship. When you do something early on, then something happens. That if you want to fix this problem, then you have to address the issue. But again, as uh, Lee uh, pointed out, instead of just letting it go, when you actually the, the center of the, the pendulum moves, then overall uh, it will add more acceleration. Here. So it's, uh, it gets faster. And also you'll be able to have a good control in terms of the uh, impact. I tried to cut in some demonstrations exactly of what he was saying to, so that it would make a little bit more sense. This is a question I've asked Dr. Kwan a lot of times because I sent him an email and said, hey, in your database, how often do you see people getting to zero cocking? So zero cocking is like if there's a line in this uh, lead arm and then the shaft, when they come in line, how often do you see people get to zero cocking before impact? The question that I put in with that too was, how do people then use the ground to hold off zero cocking from happening before impact? And Dr. Kwan said, uh, looking through his database, his database was all filled with uh, Division One golfers, tour players, uh, professionals all over the world. They're all like really, really good golfers. Very rarely did he see this happen. But then when after Be Better Golf and a lot of uh, amateur and regular golfers started to see him, he said he started to see it a lot. So that's kind of what the point of that video that, that I made that was at the Be Better Golf School. And we'll be coming out with a way that you guys can see like uh, all the hours and hours of footage from it. So what Dr. Kwan was saying is you got to find a way to hit the ball first and then get to zero cocking. He's saying that the way that the legs move, particularly how the left leg pushes the ground, then he said to get clean impact is the handle is going up as the club head's going down. It's going up and left like this. That kind of shows it. So then you hit the ball first and, and then the ground. So then at the very end of that video, he started talking about the chicken wing and how if you don't use the ground right and you kind of cast it this way, then you're too close and you have to do this through impact. So this all brings me to Tory Pines. After this golf school, we went and we played Tory Pines on the South Course, and it was way, way more fun than I thought it would be. And I played really well there, or pretty well anyway, for the first time. I didn't putt well, but I played well the rest of the round. What well, something happened that makes this whole conversation start to really make sense to me in a real world kind of way. So on the 18th hole, I hit a perfect drive down the middle. Uh, probably near 300 yards and I had only it's a par five I had 200 yards right on the button to the center I think and then like 204 to the actual flag stick if you know that hole it's the one where Tiger Woods made that famous putt against Rocco Mediate the par five it's got the pond in front of it and there's a bunch of people watching I was like man I really don't want to hit it short in the pond so I put a really big swing on it and I hit a huge yank left now if you saw Dr. Kwan's video that, that he was just talking about was the chicken wing through impact, right? So there he was talking about you go like this and then down at impact you have to go like this through. And he said raising the handle through impact to get clean contact with the arms is not what you do. He said you have to be pushing the body up. The arms stay straight because the body and legs are going up. And I sent this shot to Ed and I was like, why did this go left? And these two ideas went together really well. On that shot, you can see I hit the ball pretty good here, but then at about here, I'm finishing like this as I'm coming through. And that shows that I did not use the legs right. So if you're chicken winging, 
it's probably because you're not using the legs right and then you're trying to get clean impact by going like this. So you would fat it if you kept long arms. So you go like this through impact. Lassiter, the instructor down in San Diego, he tells me, he shows me this picture of Milo lines in his finish. And Milo's like this. He's got both arms and the club and everything like that. And John Erickson, you know, if his finish he likes is like this. And my finish was more like that. So I started experimenting with that and it really stops you from hitting it left. If you know that you have to hit it and get to this spot here, you're gonna have to use your legs to come up and through. So one hand only, if I go like this, this is kind of a good drill to feel it. You feel like your body is slinging this thing around. So that's something to experiment with. You get clean contact and a good lag impact by how you get into and then get off of your left leg. Left to pressure to start right, and then left again immediately, and then push off of that leg, which slings the entire system around this way. Left, right, left, and then sling it off. I will say there is something about wiffle balls that makes for much, much better practice. It's something that Dr. Kwan and I have talked about. It's something that Milo and I have talked about. People move much better hitting wiffle balls and can ingrain a pattern a lot better. I did see though, as I was hitting a lot of these wiffle balls, they were going to the right. And I don't know if that is a just effect of like the wiffle ball, but in my mind, I think there's a little bit of something with the wrist that just has to be added. And that's just a little bit more of this turn down move with it because you're going to have more shaft lean than you had before if you move correctly and if you just leave that alone the face is going to be open so this is really fun i mean i i really liked coming out here and feeling this i've been hitting the iron shot so much better just since dr kwan said that speech and it really got me thinking about like, hey, where is this chicken wing coming from and how is it connected to the the flip that i've had so it's really exciting stuff. I'm gonna be releasing all of the footage from the Dr. Kwan School. I did an entire day with, that was dedicated to just filming the students going through the Dr. Kwan stuff. So if you're not able to come to the next Be Better Golf Kwan School, which will probably be in November in San Diego. So send me an email, contact bebettergolf at gmail.com. But if you're not able to come, I'm gonna make sure that everybody can see all that footage and that's available probably on bebettergolf.net slash premium. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.